Welcome to chapter one of sewing my dream fall wardrobe and how you can make yours as well. I feel like it's often a universal experience that you walk into your closet and feel like you have nothing to wear. And whether that's really true or your closet is full of items, sometimes we buy and or make things that are trendy or they just don't really fit our personal style. So I have set out on a mission to fix that problem. So for me, when I go fabric shopping, I often don't find what I'm looking for in person, which results in me buying a fabric that I think is maybe cute. And while it's cute and I would think someone else looks absolutely adorable in it, it's not necessarily something that I want to wear. And I'm finding that that is really impacting the longevity of my projects. And while I never throw away a project, I will definitely donate and recycle before it gets to that point. I wanna stop doing that. I wanna have pieces in my wardrobe that I absolutely love and will wear forever. Well, as long as the fabric lasts, of course. So if this sounds like something that you are suffering from or you really just want to make a really tailored collection that fits to whatever vibe you're going for, then join me. So the first thing that I did was create a mood board and I've been making mood boards for a very long time. Um, I know that sounds really simple, but I actually think it's a really important step. Now, I went ahead and created myself just a private Pinterest board. I probably sat with this Pinterest board for about two weeks before I even started to think about what sewing patterns or fabrics I was going to purchase. And the reason why I think it's helpful, especially if you have mood boards from the past, <laughs> you know, I have Pinterest boards, I have an old Tumblr, I have old blog posts. And what I think is really helpful about that is I'm able to compare and contrast and see which trends have stayed true for myself throughout time, but also to help me identify, okay, what is a trend and just something that I've seen over and over again that I'm not really going to like in a month or two. So comparing newer mood boards to older mood boards, I find can be very helpful in identifying which colors you're really drawn to, which prints you're really drawn to, and which silhouettes will work well for your wardrobe. So mood boarding for myself has actually been very helpful. And I think what I've discovered is that I've always known that my style is very feminine and I do like the romantic side of clothing. I've also found that I'm kind of a big fan of dark academia, but I'm trying to find a way to incorporate that in my wardrobe without feeling like I'm truly wearing a school girl's uniform. I'm also a millennial who suffers from just feeling like my whole wardrobe is business casual, which of course there's a place for that, but I don't wanna be business casual you know, during the day at the office and when I go out to dinner. I think throughout this little series that I'm doing, I'm going to kind of break it down item by item. I'm definitely going to be sewing some statement pieces as well as some basics. Other than your mood board, I think something really important to consider is the climate that you live in. I live in Southern California, so as much as I would love to be in these super layered looks that are collars underneath sweaters with scarves and big coats and beautiful boots, that's just not realistic for where I live. So I'm going to have to really interpret some of these looks for a climate where it might be a little chilly in the morning, but it's gonna be 74, 75 degrees by you know 11 noon, and I'm going to be melting. <laughs> so I think climate's also another really important thing to consider when you're building your own personal dream wardrobe. So my first sewing project that I tackled for my fall winter wardrobe, I did go for a statement piece, the Cosette dress by Alice Patterns. The vibe is definitely right. It has a beautiful long skirt, lots of gathers, these beautiful side detail gathers as well, but it's sleeveless. I could definitely layer a coat or a sweater over this dress. I could layer a shirt underneath it somehow. I've seen a lot of people leave me comments about wanting to make this dress, but they haven't gone for it because of the amount of fabric that it requires. The sewing pattern does require a 60 inch bolt and five and three eighths yards of fabric. Since I used a 52 inch bolt, I had to buy seven yards of fabric, which 
I actually first bought six and then I had to drive myself to the store to get a whole other yard of fabric. I definitely recommend sewing up a test version of the bodice before you cut into your fashion fabric. I went off of what I thought would be my measurements and I think it was still a little bit too big. Definitely sew up a test version, but I mean, this dress is just as beautiful in person after you've made it as it is in its product photos. There's a reason why Etsy is definitely pushing it into your search algorithm. I will say there are a lot of gathers on this dress Personally, I find gathering a rather easy sewing technique, but I think the hardest part is probably getting these gathers into the corners of this dress. So if you are considering making the Cosette Alice dress, I think it's a fabulous pattern. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I think it would be a great addition to your wardrobe if you are anything like me. Thanks for following along. In the next chapter, we're going to be tackling tops. I'll see you in the next one.